Let me start. Thank you for coming, everyone. Appium conference is reaching to the end, so I hope you enjoy many sessions and including mine. Hi, I'm Kazaki Matsuo from Japan. Please call me Kazu. My social account, media accounts are Kazu Kokoa. I worked in Hespin as a senior software engineer. Formerly, I was a test or quality engineer at previous company. I also maintain a project, project, various clients and the server side. Today's topic is here. This session is a case study. So I pick a session up from my experience, which is probably interesting for you. I will talk about a case which capturing HTTP request to confirm network, which happening behind UI through Appium scenarios. And I will talk about a couple of tips, Appium tips, which is probably helpful when you configure a condition in the test app. First, I want to explain about the test target. This case study is mainly from my previous company's experience. The app had many historical code. The service the app provides already had been run over 10 years on the web. The service had complicated requirement. The code also had been developed for a long time. Multiple teams develops one application for each platform, Android and iOS. Totally, the app has been developed by over 10 persons for each platform from various distributed teams. No one knows entire the system without deep reading code. A team knew well their part, but the team did not the other part. The experience started from 2014, so mobile automation environment was not so matured than recent years. Test engineer was only me. Thus, in this situation, I must have covered both Android and iOS by only me. I would pick up a situation which will be the basic background why I tried to capture HTTP request. It is collecting user flow as a logs. As a service development, tracking user behavior is very important because we must improve and evolve implemented, implemented features. The service development Development means just uh, develop web services like e-commerce app or in our case is provide a recipe sharing service to the world people. Each team defines their own events, user events, and they track them, them to make user flow on the app better. Analyzing the result to, to evaluate new features, prototypes or existing features or campaign or something is a very important because the result affects their decisions. So the data should be should have been reliable. But we faced a situation that data was wrong and that case happened after raising the app and we noticed that after releasing the app. Before the release, actually, we roughly tracked the number of events, but the data on the test environment was very low. So it was difficult to know something happens before the release. But once the version was, new version was released, the amount of data by all users behaves strange uh, all users collecting on their, our DVs and 
once analyzed on data, then the behaves very strange comparing, comparing with the previous data. The number, then the number became twice rather than previous version, and uh, so the data couldn't be reliable. So we must filter the data during the release. The release cycle of mobile app were not so frequent. The wrong words remaining for a long time, in our case, a couple of weeks at least, to a month. To filter such unreliable data on analyzer, operation cost will increase because we must implement more control flows on the analyzer. So we must have reduced such unreliable data to make our operation easy and uh, reduce such unreliable, investigating the unreliable something. Today's problem is this. How to uncover such issues before racing? Let me explain how to collect user event. There is a user and uh, the user uses use this uh, app. The user does some actions for the app. For example, open the app, click the button, or go to the some views. And uh, the data is collected by such format, JSON format. There is a uh, event, and uh, the event key has an array. And uh, it, in the array, there is a name and time key, and uh, there is an event. We collect such data and uh, see the time series and track the user behavior, user actions on the server side. Once the user opens the app, for example, and then the, the app detects their action and uh, store the event on the local first. This is because reduce the network request. And uh, if the memory is full, or every day or some days uh, in a particular period, then the app send the message, send the event, event to the server. There is a two layer. In this case, one is UI, and the other is non-UI. I just call it so. A user communicates with the app via the UI layer. Process works behind the UI means a non-UI layer in this session. So, for example, storing the data into the local or send the data to the server, also non-UI. Today's talk is about such non-UI layer case. The, this talk's title, how the uncovering breaking changes behind UI so the behind UI happens, means that something happens in the non-UI layer. The breaking changes means result of like too many events log happened or few events logs happened unexpectedly. Because of some regression or something happens, we are not sure, but something unexpected happened. And as a result, the data become unreliable. I explained the session's test target and the background. From now, I want to show some cases which cause the, such breaks. I picked some cases from Android and iOS. I faced to cause such breaking changes in my experience. First is Android case. In the Android, there are two main components to view, uh, display the views. They are called activity and the fragment. Their life cycle is a bit complicated. It sometimes breaks such case very easy. These are life cycle of each component. 
They build UIs and have responsible for 100 UI life cycles on Android. Blue Car's item is just a start point to build each component. The green car is display UI, UI views on the display screen. The red car is shut down the views, so users cannot see any UIs against the activity or fragment in the red color section. Kindly, when you visit the app, then the app is basically the red section. Let me focus on between the blue color and the green color. Once the activity starts, then blue color starts, and the to become green color, there is a three step. On create, on start, on resume. And the fragment case is more complicated. There is a six part after launching the fragment before showing the, some views on the display. And thinking the open the app case. How to detect the open the app and the when we must store the open the app, when, which method should be the actually, in this method case, actually the user open the app. How to store them? We must detect and implement storing and sending logs logic to somewhere. This kind of complexity is make easy to mistake and miss implementations. But a business person say, I want to get a log when a user opened the app. But in Android case, there's a, a one, two, three, four, four way, almost four ways to, we can say, open the app. For example, the first case is very common thing. Tap the icon and uh, launch the app. This is the actually open the case. And uh, Android, we can, we can show the app history. Is the, usually there is a square icon on the bottom bar. And uh, from, we can launch the app from here. This case also for users open the app. And uh, of course, from notifi notifi sorry, notification bar, also open the app. And in Android case, if you, you already open app A, and app A open the app B, and then we put a back button, then open B disappear, and open, no, app B disappear, and app A appears again. In that case, also open the app, actually. In Android case, I saw a complicated life cycle. Open from the icon case, all process has been proceed. So if a user open the icon, tap the icon, then their activity launched and the on create and the on start and the on resume, everything is called. But for example, from launch up history, then only on regime is called. So in someday, if a developer move the logic, sending the getting the event logic from on regime to on create, then the log is called only once. Only open the app from the icon. Developers must know the, this life cycle very well to avoid this kind of wrong implementations. If no one notices the changes in their reviews, review processes, the change will risk and the relevant works will break. And the fragment is very unique. In addition to the activity case, in fragment is very, uh, have a very interesting thing. Fragment is a reusable component, so this case happened. A, you, a developer put a log into a fragment for view A, 
and uh, another developer used the fragment because uh, in another view for view B because they they have the uh, same items on the component. So the another developer think, oh, we I can use this component, but the the fragment has uh, some event log for view A, but the developer doesn't doesn't know the something logs is in the fragment, but the fragment is used in B. And then what happened? The log event corrected in both view A and view B. Even the event should be only corrected in view A. This kind of complexity happened frequently, very easy to happen in Android case. View thing in iOS case is very easier than Android because iOS have only one class, we say UI view controller. So this case not so frequently happen in iOS case, but I we happened in iOS case was this one. In iOS case, one interesting is Opera has been published on new pro programming languages, Swift. Then, many developers started converting Objective C code to Swift in Japan. Based on my experience, as developers try to rewrite their implementation in Swift, keeping current behavior. This kind of case also easy to break non-UI layer. In mobile world, implementation tied related to UI component are very quite difficult to make them testable. So it is difficult to figure out such regressions on unit test level. I talked roughly for Android and iOS specific case. And here I will show a last two things easy to happen such breaking changes. One is prototype and uh, implementation something. If our future is early stage, then we implement our future as a prototype or minimal, minimal implementation and release it. The purpose is evaluate the value of the future. Once we finish evaluating the future is worse, then we will rewrite or implement additional features more then the future and the relevant future will grow. Meanwhile, we must keep the same log to make it measurable, consistency to keep the metric. Because if some metric change, then we can't measure the same thing as a constant tree. And the uh, app also have very complicated view flows. Views are not go and back to the next screen. For example, the, in this case, the view A is only communicated with B or C, D, and B is only communicated with C. And uh, in back case, it also views C to B and to A very easy. But our app had uh, this kind of way. So view C can jump to the A from C, this kind of complicated view flow also easy to break any logs because everything is behind the UI. So if the developer just are seeing their views and they're just are thinking their mm, user can walk to the this way, then never never thought such event and some breaking change happened behind the UI. I talked about uh, our situation, logging user flow, and uh, Android uh, had a very complicated life cycle and uh, easy to break the event. And uh, in our case, we're programming, programming a language change. And uh, long, long running code has very historical thing. So the flow and the event and many things is very complicated. 
third, to make sure the HTTP request behind the UI and uh, make sure the exactly the logs have no break, I started capturing the HTTP request. What I did was uh, capturing HTTP request to ensure them if they heard unexpected logs in scenarios. I used some tools. I will explain the, some tools later. Certainly, encouraging communication between developers might prevent such breaks to, hmm, to reduce the missing some specifications, for example. But people, no one knows everything. So this kind of automation is a necessary thing to prevent such break changes. I use HC proxy server, and uh, I want to show some way to capture the HTTP. Roughly, I, when I consider the way, then there is uh, almost four ways I, uh, we can implement, we could implement. One is the app communicate with proxy server directory, and the proxy server communicate with production servers. And the production server, there is a reverse proxy to handle requests to particular app servers behind the proxy servers, uh, with, the, with reverse proxy servers. And the next, second thing is the device for the Wi-Fi settings, and we can set the setting Set a proxy setting on the Wi-Fi setting on Android and iOS. But one thing is just a connect to the Wi-Fi without non-proxy settings on the device, and the Wi-Fi communicate to the proxy servers, changing the Wi-Fi configurations. And uh, after that, proxy server communicate with reverse proxy and the application servers. This is the second way. And the third way is change the proxy, sub proxy setting on the device and uh, communicate with proxy server's directory. After that, it's the same, reverse proxy and uh, application servers. And the last thing is non-proxy servers case. In this case, we can get the HTTP request in the reverse proxy layer. So the first three thing is where we can get a HTTP request is in the proxy server. It's the third, first three things. And the last one is get, get the HTTP, HTTP request in the reverse proxy servers. We consider which way is the prefer for us. And at some point, we want you to handle test environment in a test script. And we want to start implementations from small one. So I wouldn't want to change the widely in this case. So finally, we choose the first one. Yep, the, we change the up, the up endpoint to the proxy server. And uh, after that, proxy server communicate with reverse proxy. And to achieve this, we should implement the way to change endpoint in the app, test app. There is uh, roughly three ways to change the endpoint. One is pre prepare build configuration for test. In this case, we need a read build. Second way is change the environment variables, process arguments, intent arguments, which is provided by Appium capabilities. This way is we don't need a review. If the logic already in the app, then app can change the endpoint to the particular URLs. Third is we use the change the preference via some helper app, like Appium, Appium's IO, Appium settings does. 
we finally choose the second way because the first way need uh, require uh, rebuilding. So we, we don't test against the risk build. And third way is we must prepare a helper app. So this is maybe not so small start. So we choose a second way. Very easy to implement. And the communication flow to change the environment and uh, till getting the HTTP request in proxy server and uh, communicate with server is here. In previous company with uh, Ruby mainly, so I also write, uh, wrote test script in Ruby. The Ruby communicate with Appium and Appium communicate with drivers and drivers handle test app and uh, the test app change the endpoint and uh, communicate with proxy server and the proxy server communicate with servers, real servers. And we can handle this orange point. So we can configure, change the configuration via Ruby script in the driver part and the proxy server part. We don't need to change the any code in the app test target. So we don't need a, a rebuilding for the test target or something. And uh, capture the data in the proxy layer. And one with Appium, we prepare from this. I want to show some test life cycle thing comparing it with Appium and the Espresso Works test provided by Google and Apple. In Appium case, interesting thing is Appium can control building test environment outside the app. This means I will show you your figure in next page. In XC test case, was not released yet in when I started to do this one, but in XC test case also have the same, same limitations to handle the test life cycle. Espresso also have the same one with XC test. Let me see the life cycle in the Appium. In Appium case, there is a, almost three part. First is the configure the test device and the environment, and the run the test, just a send a some find element or something to the test app. And the, the final thing is a teardown, is a re remaining app or delete app. Mapping to the Ruby code, similar to this, in, for example, in Ruby test script, called a setup, is a, like a create session, and the test something case is a, just a center of that, is a send some command to the appium, and the handle the app. And teardown is a, almost close the session, or remain the app, and go to the next setup. This, this is a life cycle of the app and the test cases, test scenarios written, by, written in Ruby. But comparing with Appium and the Espresso or XTest, then the life cycle we can control is different. In Espresso or XTest case, they, their test case start after installing the app. So Launching the simulator or emulator or preparing device already finished by the framework and uh, the setup happen after installing the app on the device or on simulator emulator. After that, we can implement a test case and tear down. And uh, so the life cycle is the, in Appium case, we can control before installing the app, but in Espresso or XE test case, we can control the life cycle after installing, but before launching the app. These are kind of exit test and espresso easy test script. We can start just a setup call 
In XC test cases, we can launch the app with launch method. But before that, already installing is finished. Espresso case also the same. We can launch the app, launch the activities, but before this is the setup section, but before that, already installing the app to the target device already finished. And next is HT proxies. I use two proxy servers. One is WireMock written in Java, and the other is I implemented one written in Elixir. And uh, the reason why we choose this one and uh, implement this one is we want to collect data by JSON. They are very easy to mm, handle, the HTTP, handle the HTTP request with JSON and uh, store the HTTP request as a JSON so we can easily to analyze the data. Actually, we use the, these proxy servers in another way, but in this session case, the most import, important thing is we can handle the request and the store the request as a JSON, very easy to handle. And we integrate the proxy server with Appium, so launch the proxy server before launching the test app. The benefit of Appium is we can control the, some environment before launching or installing or something. So finally, the test suite became like this. In Ruby script, we implement our setup and uh, some test case and tear down and uh, analyze the data and summarize the test result. And the proxy server start just uh, calling the setup, but before Appium script start, and after that, Appium start to installing the app and uh, try to launch the app. And then proxy already started. So the HTTP request, which happened after, just after launching the app, already we can capture. And uh, go the run test and uh, remain the app and delete the app. And uh, after that, in teardown phase, Ruby script close the proxy server. And in analyze section, Ruby script, with Ruby script, I counted the number of HTTP requests and pass the JSON body and make sure the log have the this log, this log, and this log. In many cases, if the scenario is the same and the event log does, doesn't change, then the number of event log should be the same. So the H HTTP request also and uh, the body also should be the same. So I just uh, check very easy. I talked about, yes, summarize. I talked about the life cycle on Appium and uh, get the HTTP request via proxy server and uh, how I implemented the capturing data behind UI and uh, we launched the proxy server before starting the Appium something and uh, close the proxy server after Appium's closed session. We can implement such thing with Ruby or Python or other script and Appium. If you want to do a similar thing with Espresso and, or XC test, then that case also you you must implement similar thing using the um, Python script for example. With Python script, launch the some XC code build and uh, launch the XC test via Xcode build, and uh, run the, some test and uh, after that XC code finished and the uh, next the signal sent to the Python script and the Python script tear down and uh, measure the result. So almost the two achieve the same thing. In Espresso and the iOS case also need a 
script case from outside their framework. That's all for the capturing HTTP request. And uh, from now, I want to show uh, one tip. The second way, I said I, sh I choose the, the way to provide our environment variables and the process argument, intent argument, which provided by Appium. What this? In XC test framework, provider environment argument for Xcode build argument. If we put our some data via environment argument, then the app launched by Xcode build can handle the environment variables when the app running on the process. If the app have m process value, for example, if the app have this kind of code, and uh, the app launched by Xcode build with process values, process env environment, then the only this case, the app can handle this method. So if you implement a control flow using this m process value, then you can handle uh, some configurations with the same Xcode build thing. If a user, no user, if someone launched the app without Xcode build, and uh, actually the end process value exists in the app, in that case, the process launched, actually launched, but the process has known this kind of environment, env environment variables. So it's very safe if you release the app with this kind of code. But in general, users never seen their, this kind of behaviors. In the app, in the app here, you can set uh, these configurations as a process argument, and uh, you can put uh, some environment, like a JSON. In Android case, we can put our intent argument. Android runner also serve a similar case we can put uh, launch the activities with some additional data. Appium already provides some kind of arguments, so the I wrote optional intent argument, but you can find other intent argument. You can use this to launch the activities, and then and then if the app have the, some control flows under the intent argument then you can configure the, some data following the, the, following the intent argument. And additional one interesting in only Android. Android can get a old package name installed on the device. So if you install the, for example, .com example, run down some package name, then another app can detect the app is exist in the device. In this case, is also you can handle the, your environment like uh, if this package name exists in the device, then the app behaves like this. You can implement this kind of code. This code is much easier, but if someone knows this outside the company guys or figure out the such behavior in the app, then the guy also can send the same argument to the app. This is our Android. So this is a bit different from iOS, but we can do this kind of hacky thing in Android case. And Uh, yeah, and uh, these are uh, additional tips. When we can embed the push notifications via Android for Android using the ADB command. In Android case, Android app handle the 
notifications as a broadcast receivers. We can send the ADB command via Appium, and uh, we can also emulate the push notifications, and uh, we can evaluate uh, something happens behind the after a user touch the push notification and launch the app. And uh, easy to emulate the suspend and the back and some lifecycle thing in Android. This is our, uh, a bit assurance tips. I put uh, one more thing, but this is a very small. And I put an uh, additional thing. I talk, just talked about the HTTP request in this session, but in Android and iOS, we can get a CPU power or uh, some metric memory or something using their app APIs. So I just, uh, I will publish this slide later. So if you're interested in this, please see this. I won't say, I won't explain about this this time. Okay, takeaways. Today, I talk about the behind, something happens behind the UI and the, oops. Ah, uh, crashed. No, sorry. I talked about the case study capturing the HTTP request behind the UI, and uh, I also show uh, uh, one case how to capture that using the RPM script, and I will also show uh, some tips to make the test target configured via RPM capabilities. Thank you very much. That's it. Yeah, I think we have time for questions. Hmm? Next. Next one. Next one. Next one. Next one. Keep it. So, uh, what I understood is uh, we are trying to capture uh, the logs, right? So, we are trying to capture uh, what happens uh, behind the app. So, that means we are trying to capture the logs of uh, logs, uh, I mean, um, HTTP and uh, HTTPS logs, right? Yes. yes? Am I right? Yeah. So, uh, in my uh, recent work, uh, in, in my recent work experience, so uh, what we noticed is when we when we bring in a proxy uh, for a for a device like Android, so uh, from the le it will stop working. That's because uh, uh, Android uh, means Android has become like so strong in security now that they won't allow when we uh, when we try to bring in proxy one. So um, as soon as we bring in proxy. Uh, uh, in, into the settings of Wi-Fi, the uh, certain apps it it won't even talk to the server, though we launch. So for this, the alternative thing what uh, we did was we we looked around can we build a solution for this or not, and uh, before that I, I I went around and tried to figure out are there any uh, tools available in market, and I found one tool, okay, my name Chuck, and uh, what it does is um, uh, it. We'll have to just uh, uh, we'll have to just plug in this uh, uh, this code to our code, and the only mandate is that the app should be means if if I want to look at uh, the logs, as and I when I use the app, only mandate is the app should be in the state of debug state. So the, this is for Android, and uh, uh, I can show you that later uh, how Chuck works and how I can uh, still collect all the logs. I can collect all the logs uh, from uh, from the start to end. So we'll have to integrate this check at the place. As I said, uh, like uh, uh, this one, um, arm create activity, be, um, be, it, be it the activity of fragment. So we can start from there itself. And everything, the logs will be uh, will be on device. And I can uh, share it to anyone from, uh, from device. So there is no need for proxy in this case. But still, proxy is a good thing to, to be used. Other way around, if I want to debug right away, uh, this way we can do it. 
and i also remember seeing one such similar library also for uh, uh, apple means for for uh, something like i ha uh, on um, ios but i don't remember the name i will try to recollect that and i will let you know mm -hmm. that's one